the history of the gender war between black males and black females. There is a segment of black males and black females who are literally at war. Their ultimate goal is to destroy the image of each other. I don't care what type of argument they come with, what type of logic. On both sides, their goal is to tarnish the other's image permanently. So bad that no one will want to reproduce with them. It's basically a genocidal social media war, right? It's political, full of propaganda from both sides, over-emotional to the point where they become defiled spirits. Now, I'm going to play a short clip from a fairly popular YouTuber, Cynthia G. And I'm going to provide commentary throughout and give you a summary of this series. A group of women who don't value them. They're chasing after a group of women who simply see them as dick on legs. She said that black men are chasing after a group of women who don't value them, non-black women. A group of women women who are not black, who view black men as, quote, dick on legs. Now, this may be true to an extent. And whatever truth exists in this scenario, it is because black men, even with those women who don't value them, black men know that. They know that these women view them in a fetish type of way. Same with black women. I don't care if they're married to a white man or whatever. They know that those men view them in a fetish type of way and don't really value them. This goes on on both sides. But the thing is, both black men and black women are willing to deal with that because on both sides, there is less confrontation. Black male, non-black female, black female, non-black male, both groups, both black parties in these relationships get along with their non-black mate better than they would get along with a black mate. Right? It that's just the fact. I mean, men, if you can't admit that, in my opinion, you're being just as overly emotional as you accuse women of being. We got to be careful. You know, we talk about how women allow their emotions to override their better judgment. A lot of men start doing the same thing themselves out of bitterness. And it take a little focus, but you got to be careful not to do that. An ineffective dick at that, where you have a lot of, of them coming out and saying, look, this myth of the BBC is false. So black women could change the dynamic by letting black men have what they have. Let them self-destruct. If they're saying Becky is better than you, they like Maria and Ling Ling and whoever, let them have them. Let these women go through what you've been going through by black men. No. Those women are not going to go through what black women go through. And black men are not going to go through both black parties are going to have an easier time in these relationships. I know people in my family, black males, married to white women. I don't know about any arguments they have. They're uploading photos, social media every single day. These seem like the happiest people in the world. This myth that uh, black men are going to make the lives of non-black women miserable is just as a myth. And it is a myth that black women are going to make the non-black male in their life miserable. No, those black women 
are going to be nicer. They're going to show those non-black men more respect than they show black men. Same on the other side. Those black men are going to show those women more respect because those women are not going to give those black men the attitude that black women would give him. Right? And with black women, that white man, now it's different. It's different because it can be interpreted as disrespectful the way these non black men deal with black women. They sort of require that um, those black women degrade black males. It's very trendy. I, I've Seem like every time I have a discussion with a non-black man, Mexican, white, who is into black women, they always have these anti-black male uh, rhetoric and, uh, you know, beliefs. And they, I know for a fact, have these discussions with their black women because they will tell me things that their black women say. Plus, they're all over social media. But you have the same thing on the other side. A lot of these black males engage in discussions degrading black women. And they have these little discussions behind closed doors. So they do it on both sides. But overall, even with that, they are going to get along with their non-black mate better than they would get along with a black man. Now, why is this? It is because... Black women give white men a certain level of respect that they don't give black men because black men are not the rulers. Simple as that. It's not rocket science. Men are supposed to be the rulers of their world, of their part of the world. They're, civil they're supposed to have a civilization, period. This is why I talk about race separation. It's the only thing that will make black people normal again. They can't be normal living under the rule of another group of people. The ruling class can be normal. Well, I won't even say that because it's not normal to subjugate another group of people. That is subhuman. It's savage. But separation is mandatory. And with any female species, they won't respect the weaker men. Right? Lions, for example. I've used this analogy before. The male lion who loses the fight, he gets chased off. And the females mate with the winner, the alpha, right? Black men being under the rule of white men, we don't get the respect that women naturally give the rulers of their culture, which is supposed to be the men, their counterparts, their natural counterparts. Here, the white men are the rulers, and they view Asian men as rulers, you know, to a certain extent. Primarily white men in this country. You know, we have a long history in this country, blacks and whites. And white men are really established as the rulers of the United States. And I can only speak for the country I grew up in. So... That's a fact. Even if that black woman wants to respect, to show respect to black men more than they show respect to white men, they're going to still give white men more respect, a certain type of respect that they don't give the black men. And it's natural, in my opinion, I think it's natural instinct. There's nothing they can do about it. It is in line with how it's supposed to be.
It's in line with nature. With women showing the utmost respect to the rulers, the alpha males. And that is not black males in this country. Now, some black males are independent. Uh, there's always exceptions to the rule. But even black men who are somewhat ind independent, say they're business owners, they still have to purchase land from white men. For the most part, they have to pay property taxes, right? You own property, okay, stop paying taxes. I bet you some white men come and take that property. So, overall, black men are ruled, dominated, been conquered. And as long as that is the case, black women, they cannot. They can't. No matter how hard they try, they cannot view you in the same way they view white men. They're going to give white men the respect of a ruler, of someone who has power. And black men are going to do the same thing. You're going to look at white men with a little more respect. We're going to respect white men as rulers. And we're not going to give that level of respect to other black men. So this gender war is really an issue of people being dominated by another group of people. Now, this does not re reflect on some flaw among black men as being failures as protectors because black men are the only group of settlers, settlers on the planet. Black men did not have to conquer any other land. Now the Moors did conquer Spain, but that's all you have. That is all you have, right? And as settlers, you don't have to be warlike. Historically, black men have not been warlike people. For the majority of history, black men did not have wars. There were no wars. May have had disputes here and there. There were no wars. There was no crime. There were no civilizations that were criminalistic. You still have patches of civilizations like that around the world today. Where you go into these people's village or whatever, there's no crime. There's no theft. No murders. No craziness like that. So, historically, a good 95% of humanity's lifetime, black men were creating crime-free civilizations. You don't have any ancient prisons. There are no reports of, there are no documents of uh, police forces. You know, you go to several villages even today. You don't have no police force, nobody to enforce the law and fight crime. Now, I'm not saying that black men are angels and that they, they don't engage in war, but we don't know what type of wars took place before, say, the Middle Ages. When you go back in time, you really don't have much evidence on your hand going back further than the Middle Ages, right? When you get to around 900, 800 of the Common Era, the year 800, year 900, there's not much evidence at that point. And if you go back even further, right, the year 700, 600, 500, and especially the BC era, you really don't have any concrete evidence of civilizations in Africa or any black civilization around the world.
You don't have any documentation, proof, evidence whatsoever of prisons, of criminal societies. Right? I'll deal with that in this series. Right? I'll get into depth with that. But from what we know, the only time black men have been warlike and engaged in war has been since they encountered foreigners. Before black people encountered foreigners, they were not warlike. That's just a fact. That's why they were, it was so easy for foreigners to take over. Because foreigners were warlike. They were not settlers like black people. They were conquerors nomadic warlike people and they come into different villages in Africa in areas all across the world Asia and America they come into these black civilizations and they saw these people had no military had no military and they took over without a fight right we'll have receipts in later uploads on this series so it makes sense blacks have been on this planet for a long time tens of thousands well over 75,000 years and that's minimum minimum 75,000 years in order for people to even exist that long, they cannot be a warlike people. They will wipe themselves off the face of the earth. The only way you can have civilizations last that long is if they are not warlike. They can't, you cannot invest in militaries the way the United States, for example, is today. This country is falling apart already. These warlike civilizations, they're on the clock, right? They don't last for thousands of years like black civilizations have. And there is no record, none, in black history of wars. You don't have any records of criminal societies, police forces, militaries, many of the white commanders noted we took over without a fight. Why? These people had no military. They developed certain cultures that embraced peace. Simple as that. Simple as that. So I can't say that this is a character flaw among black men. How come you're not protectors? Why didn't you protect the black woman? The black men were doing what they were supposed to do. Develop a civilized culture where people are not killing each other at each other's neck. Stealing from each other. Right? So everybody is raised on certain principles that involve being a civilized human being. And these principles operate every facet of your life. And foreigners came in to these African black civilizations. They did not understand it because all their existence, they've been living up in the cold, in the uh, harsh environments kill or be killed environments only the strong survive type of environments they didn't understand it right they live life having to take in order to survive so they looked at black civilizations it was like heaven these people have all types of resources all types of food they don't even have to kill animals to survive. They can live on plant life, on the earth. They have that much food. These people have all this stuff and have no culture to protect it. They're not warlike people. This is heaven. That is why black men 
were taken over, were conquered, have been conquered all over the earth. It has nothing to do with no defective gene, no intellectual inferiority. You know, actually, their intellectual superiority was taken advantage of by savage, uncivilized people who embrace a destructive, evil culture. And we've been raised in the Western Hemisphere under an evil, foreign, destructive, warlike culture. And that is the true source of this black-on-black -black gender war. I will get deeper into it in later uploads.